And we have breaking news to begin this midday. A suspended Catholic priest charged in a sexual abuse of us investigation is now in custody. Hamilton County authorities say David Marcotte was booked just before five o'clock this morning. Marcotte is 32 years old and is charged with three felonies, child solicitation, vicarious sexual gratification, and dissemination of material harmful to minors. Court documents accuse Marcotte of sending inappropriate pictures to the juvenile victim and engaging in sexual conduct over social media, including apparent attempts to recruit others to participate. The Archdiocese of Indianapolis suspended Marcon back in February after its victim assistance coordinator learned of the abuse. Abuse, abuse allegations, rather. The Archdiocese alerted police and notified the chair of the Archdiocesan Review Board about the allegation. Over the years, Marcon has worked at several places, including University of Indianapolis, St. Malachi Parish in Brownsburg, and Roncalli High School. Taking a turn right now to our forecast, we want to take a live look outside right now. This is our Weather Now camera on top of the pagoda here looking back towards the city skyline. A lot of cloud cover out there today, Todd, and this is a sign of things to come. Yeah, and eventually those clouds, Lauren, going to start to produce some rainfall across the area. For the most part, that holds off till tomorrow. There could be a spot little patch of drizzle or two here this afternoon, but the big weather story here is our transition to cooler temperatures. Near 60 right now in Muncie, 58 in Connersville, 56 in Indy, but look at the 40s starting to appear. The front is starting to make its way through the area, so it's only in the 40s right now in Crawfordsville, and we're dealing with a little bit of a breeze, and that's making it feel even cooler. So here's the view from downtown to the north. You see the clouds. There may be a few peaks of sunshine here and there as we work through our, the afternoon hours, but don't expect it to last very long if you even see it at all, and the better chance of a sprinkle or two will be over the next hour or two in western locations, then eastward at as the front makes its way off to our west. It doesn't look very organized as of right now, but this storm system is going to gain some strength and it's going to head in our direction. And that is what brings us the rain come tomorrow. In fact, it's going to be a pretty wet day. So temperatures maybe go up another degree or two here, and that is just about it. And then we'll cool off into the 40s pretty quickly and this evening with those isolated sprinkles. We'll talk about the rain tomorrow and a pretty nasty day, unfortunately, as we get into Halloween. More on that coming up in just a few minutes. Right, Todd, thank you so much. We are still waiting for more information on a shooting that left a man in critical condition. This all happened around 3.30 this morning on the northwest side of Indianapolis. Officers were called out to Linfield Court near 46th Street and High School Road. That's where they found a man with a gunshot wound to the back. That man is now in critical condition. So far, police have not released any information about possible suspects. On the northeast side, homicide investigators continue to look into a shooting death of a teenager. That teen was shot and killed around 945 last night on the northeast side of Indianapolis. Metro police were called to a home on Stouffer Court that's near East 42nd Street and North Post Road. That's where officers found the 17-year-old victim dead of a gunshot wound. Police have not released many details about this investigation so far, but if you know anything you can share with police, you can leave an anonymous tip with Crime Stoppers. That number is 317. 7262 tips. Well, it's a new phase for the impeachment battle. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi set the first formal vote on the impeachment process for this Thursday. It comes as members of Congress hear from a current White House official who listened in on that phone call between President Trump and Ukraine's leader. More now from ABC's Serena Marshall. Wearing his full military dress uniform, Army Lieutenant Colonel Alexander Vindman arrived on Capitol Hill before heading into his closed-door deposition. According to his opening statement obtained by ABC News, Vindman will testify he was so concerned by what he heard on the call between President Trump and Ukraine's President Zelensky that he feared it would undermine U.S. national security. Vindman, who sits on the President's National Security Council as a top Ukraine expert, is the first White House official who listened in on that call to testify. The accusation is that President Trump was pressing the new Ukrainian leader to launch investigations into the 2016 election interference and into Joe Biden and his son. Already President Trump on the attack, calling the decorated combat veteran a never Trumper in a tweet and questioning how he could be concerned. Was he on the same call I was on? A sentiment echoed by presidential allies. We've had the two people on the call 
President Trump and President Zelensky say there was no pressure, no one was pushed, no conditions whatsoever. But it wasn't just the call. Vindman was also troubled by comments made by Gordon Sunland, the U.S. ambassador to the European Union. Vindman is expected to say that during a meeting in the weeks before the call, Sunland started to speak about Ukraine delivering specific investigations in order to secure a meeting with the president. I stated to Ambassador Sunland that his statements were inappropriate, that the request to investigate Biden and his son had nothing to do with national security. For the decorated Army veteran, he says speaking out is about a sense of duty and honor to defend our country, which is why he reported his concerns about Sondland and the phone call to the NSC's Office of Legal Counsel. Serena Marshall, ABC News, Washington. A former school bus driver up in northern Indiana will only have to serve probation for allowing students to drive her bus while other students were on board. The Times of Northwest Indiana says Joandria McAtee struck a deal with prosecutors to plead guilty to a felony charge of neglect of a dependent. The charge will be reduced to a misdemeanor if she completes probation. McAtee was arrested in September of last year after video surfaced of her allowing kids as young as 11 to drive her bus in a rural area of Valparaiso. Well, someone will have a new home soon thanks to the Carrier plant here of Indianapolis. Today, Carrier employees began their 21st Habitat for Humanity home build. The company's workers have built a Habitat home every year since 1998, and a Carrier VP says it's only one way that they enjoy giving back. It's so important to be able to be able to provide somebody a home and everyone can relate to that and our employees again have rallied around this for the last 25 plus years and again it's a part of our culture of our company and to be able to provide somebody a home is something very important to us. Since 1995, Carrier has donated the heating and cooling equipment for every home built by the Greater Indy Habitat for Humanity chapter. Well, she made history on Wall Street, and now she's bringing her story right here to Central Indiana. And she's joining us here on the News at Noon. We'll show you how you can hear from her tonight. Todd. And Lauren, rain chances are going to increase as we go throughout the overnight hours and then throughout the day tomorrow. Rain chances almost 100%. We'll talk about the timeline and also look at your Halloween forecast when the News at Noon continues right here on RTV6. Tonight on ABC. All right, well, tonight the Stewart Speakers series is bringing in some outstanding people. They do this every year to talk about the economy, culture, and more. It's all about helping people and empowering them to change their communities. And tonight there's a panel discussion at Warren Performing Arts Center with a lot of people doing a lot of big things. One of them with us here today, she became the youngest woman ever to trade on the New York Stock Exchange. Lauren Simmons is here with us right now. Lauren, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Well, you must have an incredible story how you got to the New York Stock Exchange. How young were you, first of all? I was 22. Wow. I'm now 23. I feel so old. Oh, yes. <laughs> So old and experienced now. How did you get there briefly? Uh, briefly, I moved from Georgia to New York. The day I graduated, December 13th, got on a plane and I networked like crazy. I had zero <laughs> connections and wow. I was able to meet Richard Rosenblatt with Rosenblatt Securities and the rest is history. Oh my goodness. Well, I know that you're going to be speaking on this panel and to students. What's your message to them? What do you want to get across when you're here in Indy? The main point to be fearless, take risk and be open to opportunities. The biggest growth is gonna come from taking the biggest risk. And what would be your best advice to people who are maybe just graduating college or graduating high school and they wanna get out there and they don't know how to make it out there in the real world, what would you tell them? You gotta take the first step, get on LinkedIn, partner with different organizations that will help you get connecting. Networking is going to also be your biggest friend. And if you could do that, they you will be able to get opportunities as well. Definitely, it's about the people you meet, would yes. you say? Yes, Perfect, and so tonight you'll be on the panel speaking. Um, um, what should people expect if they're coming to this event? I'm going to definitely take, have a lot of conversation around education and the okay. importance of it K through 12 and what that looks like setting the foundation to your career. Mm -hmm. I know that is crazy to say K through 12, but it definitely is vital. Yeah. And then from there, it kind of anchors you to how you maneuver through life. Perfect. Well, Lauren, we know that there are still tickets available. If people want to come out and see you tonight, we have the website on your screen right now. Thanks so much for being here with us. And congratulations to you and your career. Thank you so much. I hope to see you guys tonight. Yes, awesome. Well, stay with us. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs> Gutters clean forever. This is RTV6 News at Noon, working for you. 
John Chanley painter Ezra McCandless was back on the witness stand for a second day today, Monday. She told jurors in Wisconsin that she thought Alex Woodworth was going to kill her before she stabbed him in self-defense. The 22-year-old testified that the victim attacked her in the backseat of her car after they got stuck on a muddy road. Are you trying to get out? Yes. You said you're unable to get out, so what do you start doing? What I start doing is defending myself. I was, as Alex is grabbing me, I started stabbing him anywhere and everywhere I could. I didn't know what was happening. I just needed to get away. I just needed to get out of the car. Were you consciously aiming for any particular place when you were stabbing him? No, it was just, it was happening fast and it, it was anywhere and everywhere. Do you have any memory of the order in which you stabbed him at all? No. Also on the defense's witness list, a psychologist that evaluated McCandless, who is expected to testify she suffers from PTSD. McCandless faces a possible life sentence if convicted. That's the latest for now. Court TV will keep following the developments in this trial. Back to you. And you can learn more about other cases all around the nation right now. Just visit CourtTV.com. Right now, I want to take a live look outside at our forecast. And Todd, you can see the cloud cover really well here from our downtown camera view to the north. And you've been telling us about this because we had a pretty nice day yesterday. Yeah. The clouds started moving in, and it's all due to some changes <laughs> we have in the forecast. And it's just going to continue to go yeah. downhill, unfortunately, as we get closer to Halloween. So yeah, it is cloudy outside right now, but for the most part, we are dry. That is the good news. I can't rule out the chance. Uh, maybe some patchy drizzle, or as you see when you look to the north here in the distance, a few peaks of sunshine will be possible. You can see the sun hitting the ground here uh, well north of downtown Indianapolis, but it is chilly out there. 56 degrees, that's the current temperature. Bit of a breeze as well out of the west-southwest at 13 miles per hour. That's making it feel even a little bit cooler, but the winds out of the southwest in Indy, northwest though in Lafayette and Crawfordsville. So you notice the difference. Temperatures there are in the 40s. Well, we're all going to see that wind shift here throughout the course of the afternoon hour. So temperatures will not go any higher at all to the west. Maybe another couple degrees off towards the east and that is just about it. But it's going to feel cooler than 60 degrees when you factor in the clouds and also that breeze. So as this front goes through, a little bit of patchy drizzle will be possible, but no substantial rainfall here throughout the course of the day today. And off to our west, you notice some snow, you notice some rain. And these two areas of precipitation going to come together and eventually bring us a lot of rainfall over the course of the next two days. So this evening, some sprinkles possible. That's just about it. But chilly with all the clouds around, temperatures will be in the 40s. Now tomorrow, temperatures really don't warm much at all, only getting back up to right around 50 degrees. But throughout the entire day tomorrow, we will deal with periods of rain off and on. It's not a complete washout like we saw on Saturday where the rain just kept coming and coming and there was no break whatsoever. There will be uh, some breaks here and there throughout the day, but this rain overspreads the area already for the morning commute. Then we deal with scattered showers throughout the afternoon. Another push of more steady rainfall comes in tomorrow evening. Then another bit of a break before the next wave of rain comes in early Thursday morning on Halloween. And we deal with scattered showers off and on throughout much of the day on Thursday. Now, once we get to the trick or treating hours, I think the steady rainfall is probably off to the east, but there still will be some scattered showers. The problem is for the trick or treating the wind and the falling temperatures and with that will come the chance of some snow showers or ice pellets mixing in as well throughout Thursday evening. So as we go through Halloween bone chilling winds on Halloween evening we'll see the temperatures fall a high of about 51 early in the day we will be in the 40s throughout the evening hours wind chill values though will be in the 20s as we deal with wind gusts up to about 40 miles per hour. So when I show you these temperatures during the trick or treating hours in the 40s just know it's going to feel a lot colder than that. So as you make preparations for Halloween, you really need to think about warmth and staying warm out there. Uh, more so than the rain, I think, as those temperatures fall. And then the first freeze of the year, Friday morning, as temperatures dip down into the 20s. And then we stay below freezing for overnight lows, both Saturday and Sunday morning. Lauren. All right, Todd, thank you so much. Well, hiring Hoosiers is all about helping you find a good job or a better job if you're not happy where you're at. 
And if you've ever wanted to work in law enforcement, Indiana State Police might be looking for you. State Police are filling their 80th recruit class this week. So with me here to talk all about it are Sergeant Roosevelt Williams, and we also have Sergeant Daniel Elwood Henderson. Guys, thanks so much for being here to talk thanks about this today. Us. So first of all, you guys are in this line of work. Who are you looking for to stand alongside you? Uh, we're definitely looking for people that are dependable and that have a good work ethic. Um, integrity is a huge thing in our job, so we want people that have all those good qualities. And so what are some of the requirements, maybe physical or, you know, education that people need to have before they even apply? Right. So one of your basic eligibility requirements is you'd be at least 20 years old, less than 40 when appointed, a high school diploma or GED, a vision corrective bill to 2050, a valid license, and must be willing to reside anywhere in the state of Indiana. Okay, and so once people apply and they apply online, what's like the next step um, in their process? Right, so then we will start our selection process. We will start next uh, Thursday, so it's a quick process. So it'll be a written exam, uh, then your physical abilities test, your oral interview, polygraph examination, and background investigation. So it's a process that goes fairly quick. Okay, and so what is there something that people may not expect or that you would want them to know before they apply? Just get your application in and check your emails routinely. Uh, we expect to get emails sent out no, no later than November 6th, okay. but probably as early as November 5th for the upcoming process. Okay, and what's the best part about working in law enforcement? No two days are ever the same. Uh, so it's a unique opportunity to help serve the citizens of the state of Indiana. So. Perfect. And can you talk to me a little bit about just benefits um, in terms of salary or what people can expect to make? Right. So while you're at the academy, you, you receive 1600 every two weeks. And then once you graduate, a uh, probationary officer is at 48000 And then within your first year, you're at 52. So within a year, year and a half, you get a $10,000 pay increase, which is, which is really nice. Uh, your health insurance starts day one at the academy. And those uh, that successfully graduate the academy and uh, field training will get, receive a new car. So. All right, so some great perks and great a great perks. line of work. We do have the website on the bottom of the screen right now for anyone who's interested in applying, and we want to get some great officers out there on the street. Absolutely. Yes. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for being with us here today. When we come back here, it is time for our pet of the week, and look at this pup with the bandana looking to find Clancy's forever home. So we'll tell you a little bit more about Clancy when we come back after the break. Stick around. You're watching the news at noon right here on RTV6. Elder Law help you get your ducks in a row. All right, Gabby from the Humane Society of Indianapolis is here with us with our pet of the week. And this week, we are featuring an adorable one-year-old pup named Clancy. So tell us all about Clancy. All right. Well, when Clancy was brought to Indy Humane a couple months ago, uh, we found that he tested pars positive for Parvo, which is a very serious and contagious disease. Um, but he went through treatment okay, and he's now available for adoption. He uh, is very curious. He loves adventures. <laughs> he loves toys. He's just down for anything, really. Really, he's, he's great. Yeah, very great boy. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, he's looking for his forever home. Uh, at 1 o'clock we open, and you'll find him at our Michigan Road location, and you can apply. All right, so he's one years old, so he's a pup. He yeah. has lots and oh, lots yeah. of energy. Lots so of energy. he probably needs to go to a home where maybe the owners are going to be a little more active, right? Definitely. They like to hike. hike they like to go yep. outside. He could be a good he's running going. partner and such. And he's a very inquisitive dog. You can see he's kind of... <laughs> looking all over the studio here um, but he is a great pup very very well mannered and as Gabby said he will be back at the Humane Society right around one o'clock yep, when you open and so if you think he would make a great addition to your home and how couldn't he with his bandana here he is all ready to go all right let's take a look at your seven-day planning forecast really quickly just lots of clouds here this afternoon maybe a sprinkle or two but nothing more than that periods of rain tomorrow already uh, before the morning commute so when you wake up, we'll be dealing with rain. It's with us off and on throughout the day. Halloween, 51. That's deceiving. It's in the morning. <laughs> By the time we get to trick-or-treating hours, we are probably in the 40s with wind chills in the upper 20s. It becomes very windy. A few snowflakes mixed in as well. And as we get to the weekend, Lauren, sunny but chilly below freezing each morning, both Saturday and Sunday. Oh, all right, Todd, thanks so much. And thank you for joining us and making RTV6 your choice for news. We hope you come back here. Join us for the news at 5 o'clock. And we hope you have a great Tuesday afternoon.